Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Justin. Can we hear the dog? Nope. You can't hear him? Nope. Oh, okay. Don't okay. see. Are you are you sure the dog's actually making noise and is not entirely just a uh no, it's an audio dog. hallucination? It's a squirrel on the branch behind me. You didn't notice? Ah, like it's yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so in your in your treehouse. <laughs> I'm already, yeah, I'm already way off topic. Yeah, the uh, audio listeners are... have no idea what's going on. That's okay. They'll be fine. Uh, I got a new Zoom background for the audio listener. So uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. As always, we're socially distanced. It's literally the only way we can make the podcast. We did it ever before it was mandated or cool. I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. And Justin is in Utah tonight. Yep. Uh, underground in Utah. Underground, covered in snow. <laughs> yep. Covered in snow already? Yeah, really? we already had one storm. We're expecting another one. High wind warnings, um, two to five inches overnight. Nice. Ooh, yep. fun. Yeah, I just did a, a trip out to Colorado for the holidays and like went from like 60s and sunny here into like teens and driving snow on I-70. And I was like, oh, this is this is the this is what it is this time of year. It just changes. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. people in Buffalo are like, ha, snow. Yeah, they had uh, feet of snow. Yeah, six. Six of them. Uh, so. my height of snow. Uh, more than my height of snow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're normal sized. I'm not. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've long established that. <laughs> Remind me to tell you a story after the show about a kid on my uh, son's wrestling team later. You're going to get a kick out of it. So Okay. Um, anyway, Justin is joining us from 23-0. Um, he was very kind to respond to email inquiries, which not all companies do. So I appreciate that, Justin. <laughs> Welcome. That's true. Yeah. It does happen from time to time. Not all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some people are just like, who are you? Why are you talking to me? That's fine. We'll talk with yep. you. Okay. <laughs> Good business, turns out, responding to emails. Yep. It's just 141, 141 episodes, I think this is now. Like we're yeah, it's, uh, it's either 40 or 41. I'm pretty sure it's 41. Um, I think I number them. So sweet, yeah. Justin. <laughs> you do. <laughs> How did you, you want to give us your elevator pitch? Where do where you want to start? That's entirely up to you. Um. <laughs> That's entirely up to you. So we can do 230 USA. We can do uh, where it all started. We can, it depends how far you want well, to go back. Let's let's go in uh, in a kind of like a timely manner. Tell us about yourself and how you got into off-roading and overlanding and, you know, this uh, this crazy little community that we This giant love. industry now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the small community of people that actually do this shit and the huge industry of people that are involved in it, you know. There is a lot that do it. Um, you guys call it overlanding. For an Australian, it's just, we're going camping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, we call it touring now. It's actually got a name now. It, uh, it's, it's actually grown the overlanding term or adopted, I think, more the overlanding term. Um, when did I get into it? Uh, somewhere back in... The probably early 90s, I think, when I got my first truck. Um, at the end of the 90s, I worked in a four wheel drive store. I had a Nissan Patrol. Nice. Uh, drove yep. the wheels off that thing, was fortunate. What, uh, to all what the era the patrol, if you don't mind uh, my asking? What uh, era it, was a G, it was a GQ, so it was a, a okay. late 80s, mm-hmm. uh, 4.2 diesel. Yep. Uh, the, the diffs are basically it's a truck. It's a truck. Mm-hmm. It, <laughs> it is a truck. A truck. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a NA diesel, right? That's not a turbo diesel. Not a turbo diesel. Mine wasn't yeah. a turbo. It was a non-turbo. Um, super reliable. Just again, it was bulletproof. These engines are good for four hundred thousand kilometers. You know, a mm-hmm. couple hundred thousand miles. So right. <laughs> right. Um, basically, you just had to uh, to get in and go, and just make sure you kept the oil oil change. Is about the that's it. That's it. I had a blue one, but that's that's her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. Um... It was Nissan's counter to like the 6062 Land Cruisers. It was. It was. So in Australia, and and it's changing a little bit now, but you either had uh, a Nissan or a Toyota. It was, it was one of those two. <laughs> yeah. They were a patrol dude or a Toyota yeah. dude. It was, yeah. Um, they were both very similar. They both um, coil, coil, uh, both big turbo diesels or six-cylinder diesels for the large part. Uh, the later patrols came out with a petrol, but uh, mine, was a, mine was a diesel, and I was fortunate enough to go... I went everywhere. Um, I got to go from Alice Springs to Darwin, um, oh, zigzag pack and uh, uh, pattern uh, up through the middle, Catherine, Kalkaringi, some places that hadn't seen white dudes for like 15 years. <laughs> um, um, stand that went for days or seemed to go for days, 
corrugated roads that would shake the teeth literally out of your mouth. Um, mm -hmm. They went for so long and you would just drift from side to side. So yeah, a long time <laughs> ago. So I've been in the industry for uh, since then. Since, so I, I would have to say since the oh, wow. late nineties. So 25 mm -hmm. odd something years. Okay. Dude, All right. Al so Alice Springs to Darwin is 15 hours plus. Like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we did it over a week. Um, the first trip that I did, I was fortunate enough to be on uh, what was called an Australian Safari Rally. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I got invited to go as a setup car. So that was where you got a, a GPS location point and you would have to set cones for um, obstacles and, yeah. and barriers because they were racing motorcycles and cars. Um, so four-wheel drive cars, like the whole gamut of off-road rally sort of style things. Um, they did it as a, uh, used it, what's called a terror trip. Um, so those things are done now. You don't even, well, I don't think you use a terror trip. It's all GPS now. So you would actually literally have a roll of paper that you would make notes on, on the way through, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that would tell you to drive 400 meters, turn left, go 500 meters. Right. So it's right. like a, like a road book. Yeah. It was like a road book, but it, it actually revolved. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, that it is was, it was really old school. So you would have to go and set this thing up. Oh, there you go. That brings back memories. Um, <laughs> you have to go and set this thing up to make sure that it was um, um, calibrated. Because if it wasn't calibrated, your turns were a little bit out mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, so that was that was an awesome, awesome trip. I remember standing at the end of that. I was on a sat phone. I'm talking to my mum on a sat phone in a place that I stood and I looked around for just a moment and realized that. We hadn't passed, apart from a fence line, we hadn't passed anything that was human made for two days. Oh, what? Uh, gas That's stations, awesome. No roads, no anything. Uh, just the remoteness of that uh, really puts it back in its perspective that you are but a speck on the planet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's times like that when, uh, when you realize the reach of human interaction has only gotten so far that it's like okay this is it's it's bigger than us you know there is yep. more to it than us yeah um that's awesome though so was uh was the nissan like your first foray into this or did you have like prior exposure or you no, just had, bought, you so, bought the truck so, um if you go back to my early childhood years uh or late childhood so when i first got my license um i didn't get a four wheel drive at first i was given a mini Yes. Mm. Yeah. So always um, a good place to start. It, well, yes, but no, because I'd already discovered the off-road <laughs> part, but we did it in a mini. Um, we once got the mini so stuck, the only way we could get it out of the field of mud was to turn the idle up, let it run, jam it in a second gear, and between the two of us pushing and throwing toolboxes and floor mats and spare tire, <laughs> whatever we could underneath to get it out of this field of mud. So that was yep. that was the first one. Um, some years later, I did get a, uh, uh, I'm not sure what you call it. We called it a, a Nissan Pathfinder. So I I mean, a Pathfinder we also call while. it a Pathfinder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I, I found the limitations of that fairly quickly. Yep. Um, that's when I got the patrol that moved me into working for a four wheel drive store. So my patrol was considerably uh -huh. larger than most at the time. Mm -hmm. um, certainly not now. For us, 35-inch tires back then were illegal. They weren't <laughs> even something you could talk about. So Really? Um, no, no. And and to truth be known, uh, a lot of the stuff that we used to do, we ran a, a 255-7016 tires. So that was fairly okay. narrow, but fairly yeah. tall. Yeah, we call um, them pizza cutters. Pizza <laughs> cutters. And that trip that I did, we ran it on a... Uh, a, a reverse mount split rim. So I was able to change the tire um, on the fly, uh, not on the fly, mm. but certainly if you had a blowout or, or a flat, um, you would just pop the split off and it was on the back, not the front. Mm. You would just pop the split off and, and fix your gear and away you went. So very, very wow. different to what we oh. did now. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, good fun. Good fun. Yep. yep. Is this the right generation of Pathfinder? Uh, that's the one. Well, yeah, mine was uh, a two-door black one. Um, I'll never, ever, ever have a black four drive again. Um, <laughs> Pinterest being oh, horrendous. Sleep I am living. The back of that back then was so hot. Um, you could actually see the steam come off the windows and, and vaporize <laughs> on the glass oh. as the sun hit it first thing in the morning. Horrible. Uh, so, yeah, it was, yeah. I, and I, I, you know. Yeah, my I, we, we don't have, 
We don't know if you like that, but I'm living the uh, the black paint hell right now with with a uh, what what out west they call desert striping, where you know you are, and yep. out east we just call it getting fucked by a tree. So. <laughs> and 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 the, the the tighter the trees, the more it goes. Yeah, and they're all stories, but they get and to a confirmed. point that you can't get the stories off. Exactly. There we go. There we go. There That's you it. go. I could I could fit in the back of that thing. Um, I I love that truck. I really love that truck. It was uh. Um, it was an awesome, I found its limitations. Um, it drives very different to a traditional um, solid diff front and back. Mm -hmm. uh, the front corner has a tendency to bend the brackets that hold the um, uh, tie rods and uh, suspension oh, no. arms and drag links, oh, I think. That's so not ideal. Invariably, you'd come out of the bush and one wheel would be facing forward and the other wheel was facing the other wheel. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. Suboptimal. Is that yeah. a body on frame truck or is it unibody? Um, that is a body on frame truck. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, at least it's got that going for it. it, it did. I mean, whole... you can put a whole bunch of better stuff under it. Again, in hindsight, it, it was a fun car. Um, mine was an X, what they call a, a um a back then FM radio was huge and it was a black thunder. So it was the it was mm. a radio, an X radio truck. So it was massive <laughs> mileage, um, but looked looked sick. I had yeah. all the good stuff on it, but yeah, um, it was, it, it, you knew, knew that it had done 300,000. Well, mine was kilometers, so <laughs> it had a lot of miles to it. That's for sure. Am I making it up or was there there a version of that that had a removable rear roof section? Um, I don't think so. Or was that just the forerunner of the era? Yeah, it's the I, forerunner. I it's just, the, just the forerunner. Just the forerunner. Mm. Maybe, yeah, I'm... I, I my aunt and uncle went through three of those pathfinders. Up, like they, they, my uncle got one, then my aunt got one, and I think one of them, one of those were handed down to my oldest cousin, and then they got another pathfinder kind of thing. And eventually, eventually, one of those was my youngest cousin's, and I'm pretty sure it was stuck on a golf course, uh, in a sand trap. Yeah, that the sounds. Snow. That, 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 yeah. So sorry, Michael, for telling your stories. <laughs> the statute of limitations has long since passed on that so. oh god yeah he's in his he's deep into his 30s now at this point yeah man we talk about all the time about the two-door suvs though and how much we miss them so especially yeah, it. part is we often remember the uh the adverse stuff that happened in our yeah, I couldn't tell you about all the fun stuff. All the good it was a perfect trip. The sun was gleaming. Yeah, right. No, no, it's, the, it's right. The, the shit that goes wrong. That's what you remember. Uh -huh. well, the the guy I was telling you about earlier, Justin, the he the the trip that he and I had and our other friend Brett, like we were supposed to drive a dry riverbed and it rained six inches the day before, and that was not a dry yeah. riverbed. And instead of traveling thirty or forty miles on this riverbed, we went two miles, and that was it. Like the trip was over. Like yeah, drowning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, expect the worst. Hope for the best. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh. Okay, so after so after that, how uh, how did the trajectory go for you to then and now? Uh, I drifted in and out of uh, from trucks. It's kind of I had some company cars after that, so I shifted into uh, different markets that allowed me to have trucks that came along with the job. Um, so over the years, I've been in and out of manufacturing in and out of repping in and out of all sorts of stuff um i've got a thing for four wheel drive vans yes so oh boy four -wheel drive van um i had a mix <laughs> l300 four -wheel drive um God damn the story man. goes like this i'll try to keep it relatively short but it's kind of if you know cars the mitsubishi has an, an interesting little engine to it um i flew to melbourne to buy this thing they're super, super hard to find, especially in, in this condition. It was mint. Um, the back had seats and they all folded down. It formed a bed. Um, I just left my job. I worked for a portable fridge company back then. Um, I just left my job. Um, with the money that I received from that, I bought a $7,000 mountain bike and, <laughs> and a, and a, and a $4,000 L300 bus. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the inverse of what most priorities people were good. Do. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, flew down to Melbourne with a little bag full of stuff, you know, a, a sleeping bag and a pillow and proceeded to drive it back from Melbourne. Um, halfway back from Melbourne, I camped overnight, started the next morning. Now it was previous to that. That's a Delica. It goes back a couple of models to that one. Okay. Um, um, uh, and I'm driving back and I wake up in the morning and, 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 and kick this thing over. I get maybe 
I don't know, a couple of miles down the road and I look in my rear view mirror to see this puff of smoke, white smoke. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> shut the thing down. Realize that it spat a bolt off the oil journal, spewed oh, engine, like its entire engine oil, it's dumped it, bang. All of it, it was done. How uh, how far were you at that point? Oh, I was in the middle of I was in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, there was no <laughs> idea where was. yeah, no, that's thinking, always where the good breaks happen, right? It is, and yeah. and, and I yeah. I knew that I couldn't start it and run it because it was out of oil at this point. It dumped mm. it out. Um, it was still dripping from everything that was underneath the underneath oh. the, the engine cover. Um, Devastating. I didn't I didn't have uh you call it triple A. We call it uh, RACQ or RACV. I didn't have that at the time. So I'm on the phone to my, my girlfriend at the time trying to backdate onto her RACV because I got to get this in tow to somewhere. So oh somehow she manages to get that hooked up. Um, I get it towed to the next town. We put a bolt into the hole that, that's come out. The damage is already done. So mm -hmm. that particular engine has a balance shaft on one side of the engine to offset the 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 crank on the other so it spat a bear or spat a bolt off the balance shaft which means all the oil spewed out i didn't know at this point but it spat the bearing as well oh no, no. Uh... So i continued to drive this thing home <laughs> um i get home i think you know i better change the oil um again i i undo the oil plug and there's pieces of shiny bearing coming out oh so no. i take the sump off and and here is the pieces, like the the literal pieces that mm -hmm. buried. Just come. I'm like, oh my god! This oh is my man, new, my man. new car. I just flew to Melbourne to pick up. Yeah, it was it was a sad it was a sad story because it was, it was perfect sad. too. And yeah, all right. of a sudden it wasn't perfect. Well, it 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 continued for many months after that. Um, its only real drama is it ran low oil pressure. So I fixed that with a piece of electrical tape. I put that over the top of the light. That yep. fixed that. <laughs> Um, problem yep. solved and away we went so it survived mm -hmm. for, for, for quite a few months after that and died a horrible death at the expense of um, someone who stepped off an intersection drove it into or just clipped the pat to avoid the dude that stepped off the intersection at 4am in the morning going mountain biking um, clipped a light traffic light pole in the middle of the road and just got it at just the right spot that they rode it off oh no oh ha oh, oh. <laughs> Parts Not that you feel sad. Parts yeah. of me are going, oh, I dodged a bullet on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds like it was a uh, it was destined for its uh, so, destiny yeah, from look at probably from the time you picked it up. Yeah. So you said L three hundred, right? L three hundred Mitsubishi L three hundred four by four. So, but before the generations of Delicas. Yes, yeah. So the Delicas, Delica are a, Delica. uh, what, what we call the Japo import. They're the turbo diesel. This had a uh, an eighteen hundred. Um, Chrysler Sigma motor in it, mm, yeah, beautiful. It was much much squarer than the than the newer ones. And uh, you know what? I still love the shape. I've still got a soft spot for four wheel drive vans. Um, I bought one here as well, or I found one. There was one in the neighborhood. It had three wheels. It was a tripod. Um, I convinced what was my wife I needed it. Um, it was a Dodge, a seventy seven Dodge B two hundred. A Dodge van? Yeah, it was it was a Dodge van? Yeah, it was it was yeah. That was a bad. Oh one. my gosh! That was a bad. Yeah, one. yeah. It's a four by four too. Yeah, it was. So it well, it was a three by four. It was a four by four. It was a three by four. If I it was a three by four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never did. I never. I never found the parts. I spent months trying to look for. He um, drove it till the brakes had, had chewed through all the rotor. Hmm. So the whole the whole hub assembly just fell off on the road. That's where Sounds it stopped. Like a, uh, every <laughs> dollar that was possible that was, was invested yeah, yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, in gas, not in maintenance. It was, uh, yeah. My wife drew the line at that. Um, <laughs> I'm allowed to have projects, but if you park them in the front of the house, they need to have four wheels and look like a car. That Usually, was, rules. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I'm I'm okay with those rules now. Yeah, yeah, we get that. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, uh, so how does twenty three zero come about in this whole story? Ah, twenty three zero came about. Uh, I actually got imported by another company. Okay, um, you personally? Uh, pardon? You personally got imported? Yeah, yeah. So, um, back then I did. <laughs> um, I was in what you call an an independent agent. I think you call them here. I was an yeah. independent rep. Yeah. So I worked for lots of different companies. Mm -hmm. Um, 
one of the companies I worked for wanted to set up establishment in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, they moved me over. I set up all the distribution network, all the hubs, all the people. Um, a couple of years into it, they decided that maybe that wasn't really for them. Um, uh, and I kind of made the decision that uh, prior to working for them directly, I'd worked for myself for the previous 10 years. Um, because as an independent, you don't really have a boss per se. Mm -hmm. Um, so I decided that no, I was probably going to stay, uh, and started to hunt some opportunities for, um, some of my previous life. Um, uh, cause I've, I've sold my goodness, swags, rooftop tents, 30 second tents. I've, I've sold, uh, clothing. I've sold full drive gear. I've sold, um, you'd be surprised. So in, in Queensland, Australia is the only state in Australia you can buy a slingshot. So I would like a buy Polaris slingshot or like a physical like hand slingshot, oh, hand slingshot. <laughs> like a like an old school okay. like an yeah, old okay. school yeah, rubber yeah, yeah. elastic strap. So uh -huh. uh, I I made quite a quite a good living on um a Trumark American made in Colorado Trumark slingshot was one oh. of the things that I used to sell back then. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so um so that uh yeah so I I did a lot of different stuff. So I chose one of the brands or one of the items I guess that I saw was on the way up and that's where 230 kind of started nice interesting okay yeah i mean it's definitely so so yeah give us your uh your 30 second what is 230 <laughs> doing selling promoting you know what's what's the uh the mantra uh 230 is basically everything that you can use to get attached to your vehicle to get off road somewhere um, we try and stick to, well, not try and stick to, we have a, a bit of a mantra of quality first, price second. Mm -hmm. um, innovation uh, is definitely, we, we like to be the leader uh, in the innovation. Um, the LST fabric, we were the first to come out with uh, light suppression technology. Um, mm -hmm. As far as I know, we still are the only ones that use uh, that technology. So it pretty well makes the tent completely pitch black on the inside so mm -hmm. you can actually sleep in. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do in the in in our products is not necessarily seen. It's just in its form and function later on. Um, mm. The internet is a tricky is a tricky thing. Um, we can make pictures that look like anything, but you don't really know the 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 good parts until you dig into some of the smaller details. So a lot of the small details of our product are what are what is our claim to fame. Okay. And from that, we started from, uh, goodness, we started from two tents, so two SKUs. Um, we're now at 180 SKUs. Holy and shit. We're, um, <laughs> oh, uh, my God. We got 11 models of tent, seven models of annex, um, seven models of awning, sleeping bags, lights, Jesus. Uh, it's, it's just, it's just, so anything that we, we kind of go, okay, there's a, there's a need for something and the light suppression technology was a great one. Um, the stuff worked so good. You couldn't find your cell phone in the morning. Mm -hmm. So we created a light that actually glowed in the dark. So you can actually <laughs> find it to turn the lights on. Yeah? You're, making, you're making your own solutions to your own problems. Exactly. That's, yeah. and that's kind of what happened. So uh, a lot of it, uh, we didn't find a sleeping bag that fit in our tents very well. So we made one. Um, um, we've got a tent that's 87 inches wide inside. No one makes a sleeping bag that big. I'm not sure why you want to sleep with that many people in a tent, but you know what? Yeah, that's okay. That's, that is, uh, that, well, Chris, what's the thing we keep saying about that's like 80 something inches is the width of a Hummer H1? Uh, 80, 82 or 83 or No, no, it's 89.6 because oh, the, with the so mirrors. You get it on sideways. Yeah. You can get it on yeah. sideways. Yeah. That's a big that's, vehicle. Wow. That's, a that's big crazy. Vehicle. Yeah, um, no, that I would tell you that 100%. The reason we're having this conversation is because I found an 87 tent, 87 inch tent, when <laughs> I can fit all my kids in that. You can absolutely. I've um, also been discouraged from that to say, get a smaller one and get a kid's tent and then have an adult tent. Yeah, right. It's like the kid's table at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> get away from us. exactly. Yeah, there's but look, and both uh, both schools apply. Um, the tent's big enough that you could fit six adults without absolutely. without killing this. Um, really so it's a, big, it's a big unit we've done uh expo west i think we had six adults side by side in one of these things and and still had room um would i want to go out with six people in a tent every night hmm. if that was my only choice yes yes um, 
Um, if it gets I, me off the ground, yeah. yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> there are some people who do that willingly every like, weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So we put uh, we we created a sleeping bag that you could actually join two together. So we do a Duke sleeping bag, which is 44 inches wide. You can join the two together oh and we can have an 88 inch sleeping bag. If that's <laughs> what no, I'll sleep in the same yeah. tent with those kids. Yeah. I am not sleeping in the same sleeping bag with them. I've done yeah. it once and it was miserable. <laughs> so the, the sound of something being a good idea and it actually being a good idea. Yeah. 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 You could use that across, uh, across life. You yes. Know? Yes, <laughs> actuality and uh, you know concept and reality are two different things. But that that's oh, crazy. I mean, you know, we we talk about the plausibility of like a three or four person tent, and we're like, God damn, that takes up like the roof of a car, you know. And and to having something of that that size is, I mean, I've never seen it in person. So it's <laughs> for- it's it's interesting. It depends on what you're going to go and do. So we've done some work way early in the piece. We worked with, and I shouldn't say we worked with, they work with us. Um, the guys from Lifestyle Overland chose an 87 inch tent for their first adventure to Alaska. Mm. Um, there was only three of them. Um, and a lot of people saw that and went, you know what, we need a tent that large. But when you dig into the details, um, if you get stuck somewhere that the weather's not cool, and this is your house, like mm-hmm. you know, a house, you're on the road 24 seven. Um, having that extra space to just live is kind of good. Right. Is it right. something you need for just three people? Oh, hell no. It's it's a huge unit. It doesn't actually change a lot in the setup. It works the same as a as a 56 inch tent, like a two person tent. It's just bigger on the roof. You're right. It's just mm-hmm. bigger on the roof. Yeah. yeah, I mean, think about, I mean, just to extrapolate from there, it's like, having a twin bed for you know one and a half people over a long period of time or having like i guess in if it's three people in a, in a tent that big it's like you have basically a twin bed plus to yourself exactly well a california king a california king size is 72 inches so it's bigger than a cali king good that's, lord man that's crazy we have a queen size bed and i can't imagine a bigger one so that's that's wild all right, so so tents, awnings, lights, annexes, all the uh, all the fixins, as they say, that's your uh, yep. bread and butter. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. And, and and it it doesn't stop. It still continues. We're still working more. This year we dropped out a range of. Uh, we saw the market changing in a hard shell. Um, so we've got a couple mm-hmm. of hard shell units that have come through. Um, well, actually, we started with one. Now we've got five. Oh, wow. actually, there's actually nine if you hang on nine if you count the left and right variety of it so the armadillo x and the armadillo a so the x has got the x frame at the back that you can see there uh the a has an aluminum mm-hmm. shell hmm. um so both of those have a left and a right version of them so okay um, gotcha four models just in uh two sizes left hmm. and right in both okay interesting yeah the hard shell over the last, probably since COVID has, has really seemed to take off in a way that even just like the, you know, soft rooftop tents, like haven't. Um, and, you know, part of that is probably just the prevalence of what you see on social media. But it, it I shit, I see, you know, the hard tents on friggin' Subarus and Highlanders, you know, like all over the place. But the uh the alternative is really just reserved for the actual like you know more hardcore people so it's it's interesting um and we're, we're all naturally lazy well we're not all naturally lazy mm. I, I'm australian so i, I am. am um <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> we and, get it. And, we, and we want more convenience more speed so it becomes a balance between um uh when we first started with the ground tent and it would take you, what, 10 minutes to set your tent, 20 minutes to set your tent. Not mm. too bad. And about the same to pack it away. It was inconvenient. So we went to a rooftop tent. Um, you don't long have to worry about flat ground. Um, the tent's already attached to the truck. All the bedding can generally fold up inside it. So great. Mm. So now we're down to a, you know, eight minute odd setup, mm. I guess. Um, and we went, you know what? That's still not fast enough. We need faster. Right. We need faster. <laughs> it's, oh, oh shit. Yeah. What movie is that? Seven minute abs. It's something about Mary. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so six we, minute abs. 
Yeah. The six minute abs. Well, that, that, that we'll add that now because we've got tents that 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 um, all but set themselves up. Mm. Um, not quite there, but pretty close. So extremely yep. quick. And as now it's the balance. I don't think soft shells will ever go away. Uh, I think there's a there's a price point. There's an there's a, mm. a, a the the uh, barrier to entry on a hard shell is definitely the cost. Um, you don't get if and and I see yep. this all the time. Um, I want a soft shell. I want a hard shell tent for under a thousand bucks. Yes, you could get it, but your wheelie bin that you throw out in the morning is probably stronger than what mm-hmm. you get for a thousand dollar hard shell tent. So yeah, I don't, I don't want. Oh man, I don't want that plastic. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a time where you could go on Amazon and, and get a soft shell tent for like five hundred bucks, and the reviews were just abysmal. Like it was, uh, it was like yeah, I used it once and it was great. And the second time I used it, it uh, it collapsed under me or something like that. I I, I was you in know? a factory. Uh, I was in. Um, and prior to contrary belief, there's there's a bunch of different factories. There's not one factory that builds all this stuff. Um, <laughs> this is something I hear all the time and I find it's funny. It's like one factory that builds every shoe on the planet. Like this oh, just yes. can't happen. Yep. So I was at a, I was at a factory and, and I, I'm looking at this tent and they're telling me all these people that are buying it. And, and I, jumped, I jumped into the frame and the floor started doing this. And when I looked underneath, I realized that it was only a quarter inch thick ABS plastic. That was mm. it. There was no structure. There was no aluminum, there was no frame, there was no anything. And I went, no, 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 surely that's not, um, you don't sell it to anybody, do you? And they quite proudly pronounced the the names of the brands that they had sold it to. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> they were I, I did see it, yeah. the, that, and I'm not going to mention the brand, um, but uh, I, I, we, we definitely saw that tent. Um, so I knew exactly where it came from. And they went on sale for a ridiculous um, price without a warranty attached because they probably realized at that point that oh my goodness we've made a horrible mistake yeah um, don't warranty it, it, us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly the average american was going to go straight through it you know so as i said your wheelie being on the roof would have been safer at that point yeah oh, big yikes yeah. big yeah yikes. so so that i think that the uh price of convenience is you've got to be a little bit careful on um cheap is cheap yeah, cheap is cheap for a reason. Man, I mean, we're seeing more and more the you get what you pay for kind of thing, you know, as the cost of materials rises and as we experience like inflation catching up with what things are actually worth, like the, the you get what you pay for thing and in, in products you actually use is really like making itself present. So oh, ab- absolutely. Here we go, and- you know. We chuckle at it all the time, you know. We uh we see vehicles drive down the road, and it's a, you know, it's a, an eighty five thousand dollar Dodge Ram, and it has the cheapest possible tent that you could put on it. And you kind of go, okay, I know. Okay, so you, you you went and bought you spent five hundred bucks on a on a tent to go on your eighty thousand dollar rig. I don't, I don't understand, mm-hmm. but that's okay. Everybody's got their own thing, and there's a place for all of it, which is which is kind of what makes it so interesting. But you've just got to be. Um, the one of my favorite saying is, is do your homework and make a good choice because you've got to do your homework um, yeah. and the pictures on the internet and um, you can't quite see that. But if I did that the right way, <laughs> what does it look like? yeah. So yeah. the pictures don't always tell the yeah. story, do they? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. get it. We get it. Yeah. That's so, for the uh, audio listener, Justin was <laughs> revealing some anatomy. That was just his fingers really close to the camera. <laughs> or was pretty funny. That's pretty funny. But oh, since, man. Oh, sorry. That was no. complete, I was going to completely derail us because I'm, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've seen celebrity do that on a late night talk show with his cell phone kind of thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 So uh, so as we, we get closer to the, uh, to the end of our time here, Justin, what's in your personal garage? What are you uh, playing with these days? Um work stuff is yeah. is where I, I like to leave that um uh so we have a dodge ram 2500 that's ram yep. shop uh we have mm-hmm. violet who's a uh, uh dual cab tacoma uh we Love have roxanne which is a new gladiator that's our latest build mm. um we are yep yeah, there's violet yep yeah, well, that's with a armadillo a on the back of it um we also have a subaru cross trek okay so you're co- you're covering the uh, the spread of what is like the typical off roader overlander trajectory. You start with a Subaru. You realize that yep. you've maxed out its ground clearance and its all wheel drive capability. You get into a Toyota. You eventually realize you've hit the payload capacity or off road ability or 
realized you absolutely loathe the engine and transmission in the Tacoma and then buy a 2500 power wagon or Cummins powered Ram and uh, load it up with a tent and a whole bunch of shit. Yep. Yep. That's pretty well it. That's yep. pretty well how it goes. Yep. And um, yeah. each one has its own benefits. Um, mm. And downsides. Uh, hang on. Incoming. Incoming. Hey. 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 <laughs> Come on. That's, we, uh, that's a cute incoming. We'll take that. Yeah, we, we have we have a, a semi official rule that if a dog makes an appearance, it has to be introduced. So, oh, okay, may or may not oblige, but that's up to you. Newy. Oh, that's the ram. Holy shit, that's awesome! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, darling. Come say hello. Come on. It's so big. That's okay. a good looking truck. What does that weigh? <laughs> that's new. Hi there. Hello. Hi, pupper. Hello. Oh, there we oh, go. Yes. <laughs> yes and that was uh ram truck in the background there um that is my favorite toy my favorite truck uh it goes absolutely anywhere it tows our 26 foot trailer full of stock we've driven it to virginia we've driven it to texas we've driven it all over the countryside um that was on a trip with yukon gear and axle we did the utah backcountry discovery route um so we were following jeeps um uh, Tony Pellegrino was one of the guys that was on that trip. So we're trying to catch, follow Tony Pellegrino in a V8 Jeep in a Dodge 2500. That was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. It seems like a good time. It was, um, yeah. Power sliding. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Swedish flick. Yes. Yeah. Scandinavian flick. Scandinavian. There we go. Scandinavian. So Scandi flicks in something yep. that large takes on a whole new, uh, whole new meaning. Yeah, it uh, it it ramps up the pucker factor right quick. Uh, just a little, just yeah. a little. Was yeah. it was it Tony's race truck? Was it the black one? No, it was aftershock. Oh, I've got the, the, the race the... truck street legal. No, it was the, it was the white <laughs> one called aftershock. Okay, yeah, I've got it. But it's and, not and he's a an good extremely picture. talented driver. Um, mm. so yeah, it was the pace so three of the drivers that were on that were all uh 4400 class 4400 race drivers for king, so all for of king them of the drove quickly mm -hmm. everywhere yeah good fun i got a picture but it's awful resolution <laughs> one more the internet in 2022 still I letting know. us down <laughs> <laughs> like i'm really good at google search i swear you are busy you are. so right. yeah no it's uh that level of competence behind the wheel, like there's some people you'll just never get. There we go. That was on that trip. That's that was on that trip. That was the beast. What's yeah. happening with the back two thirds of the roof there? Um, it's a solar panel. Oh, it's solar. Okay, it's not like a <laughs> weird, like sunroof. It's not like traction freedom panels. No, yeah, or, it was a like solar the... panel. So, um, okay, uh, we had some interesting chats on on the foray into the overland market and how it's now spreading from um, something that was fairly limited and new and shiny to uh, a lot more mainstream and accepted. And you don't have to have a rock crawler to actually go camping in your rig and, and become an overlander. Mm. Um, yeah, they, a rock crawler is actually across. pretty contradictory to what you want. What was that? A rock crawler can be fairly contradictory to what is well, good for uh, for exploring. It can, and, and some days it's not bad. You know, some of the stuff we went on that, um, they certainly had some advantages over what mm. I was, at, you know, the size that I was, um, so especially on some of the skinny trails at, at height. Um, yeah, there was some With. pucker moments there. Yeah, yeah. You get it. Sorry, I'm writing Tony's name down. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know, no, I, I mean, I personally, I found that, you know, rock crawlers with, a certain level of suspension softness and flex to account for climbing over rocks will eventually become detriment for stability and comfort when you're not doing more crawly type stuff. So well, there's, it's, there's, there's a trade-off. Everything is a trade-off. And it's fuel economy as well. You know, you know, I run a Ram yeah. on 40s. Um, it still gets 16, 17 miles per gallon. Um, that Jeep on the same size tire I could guarantee you it's not going to get 16 miles per gallon. Yeah, no. the, yeah. I'm the taking the guess the Ram is a six seven, a six nine. A six seven. Yeah. Six seven. Um, okay. But that is an exception. We stuck, out, 
we stuck a 60, uh, sorry, a 53 gallon tank underneath it. Mm. Titan? So, the big Titan, Titan tank. Titan yeah. tank? So, yeah. 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 So it, it drives, uh, I think it drives like 150, 160 miles before the fuel gauge actually starts to move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've heard of people on, on stock size tires with like an intake exhaust in tune with a Titan tank doing. 900 to 1100 miles on a, on a tank. Yeah. You know? Good Lord. Um, that Eventually, engine is an exception to almost every rule. And if you get a, a pre emissions version, it is like, it's, it's golden and, you know, you get a stick and you're fucking like own it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, you would, but they're like, they're like, uh, that's like a rocking horse or a unicorn. Cause you're just not going to find that. Yeah. True. Dude. I love the, pr- the prices are responding accordingly. I'm gonna I'm gonna derail us a little bit. I because I know we talked about the tents, but like your guys' awning seem to be at just a different level. See, the the two seventy and look, it's all about living space, isn't it? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. living space. Um, getting out of the out of the sun's one thing. Uh, you add the walls on, and that changes some stuff up considerably. And you've got this massive living space that you can. Uh, you can fit your little fire pit in there, your little gas fire pit. You can cook. Um, you can you could actually fit four people if you want to sleep on a on a cot or in a swag. Um, uh, you could fit four four people in swags under under that one. I was and gonna say how fun. many how many people just go with the awning and they don't do the tent. Um, not a lot actually. Usually the tent leads the awning. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. In most cases, the tent leads the awning. And then they're looking for that extra that extra living space because again you you've right. got a tent on the top, uh, you you can't stand up in it really you can't you're not moving about in it much so you want that extra bit of protection from the elements and that's climb out of the tent come down use the awning for all your clothes Other changing stuff. and exactly. preparation yeah 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 yep. yeah yeah that makes I, sense I love them so much like <laughs> they're so big. How far away are we, are we from like a full 360 awning? Like somebody's got to do it eventually, right? There's, I think there's one or two out there that that are <laughs> have got the concept. The, the the hard part to that is, as you mentioned, the Hummer. What was it? 87 inches, 85 yeah, inches yeah. wide. So the the top of the Ram is is 65 inches wide. Um, uh, a Toyota is like 52. So depending on what truck it's going to go on, you need to make it fit a bunch of stuff. It mm-hmm. comes really hard. Um, we did our 270 that the arm on the back. So we've done a five arm. There's um, four, five, and six arm versions of that of that ilk, that wraparound style awning. Um, we did our 270s in a five arm. So it means that as the arms spread, it has an arm that goes with, this way and this way. So the Toyota's tailgate can come up here but still fit on the arm. So the arm goes and mm. so it covers the tailgate. So the tailgate hits the fabric, but not the awning. Smart. Yeah. So so uh, I'm trying to point to it, but mm. <laughs> I'm trying to point to it, but that, <laughs> that back uh, that back section there uh, means that the tailgate comes up underneath that. So it, it, it takes away a little bit of the coverage, but means that it fits on all the full runners and everything that's mm-hmm. got a tailgate that lifts from the back. So um, we've kind of stuck with that Smart. design. But that thing's 20 feet from front to back and comes out um, about 78, 80 inches without mm-hmm. using the side panels, the optional side panels. Hmm. That's a big unit. Big unit. That, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. When when they're just set up with the walls, it's like, I don't I don't know why I need the tent. I just have to have a little cot. Like, <laughs> well, And that's where a swag comes in. Yeah. yeah? You swag out, you're good. You get your own private little bed there. Yep. I don't think we've adopted that as in America the way that it has been elsewhere. Uh, it's actually growing. We didn't bring swags in for years. Um, and I'm glad that I didn't because you'd hate to roll the dice and bet your future on, on a swag in the US. And I saw many companies come and go. Um, in Australia, uh, 230 is, is probably one of the biggest swag manufacturers in the country um, oh wow so in that market very very different um we're huge so eventually we went okay let's bring some of the australian units across we've got enough space in the warehouse we're not relying on it to feed us um the market's <laughs> changed and grown uh mm. there we go the bandit yep so that's exactly the same as the australian model um mm. 
and and they've they've actually really grown in popularity. So uh, there's a there's a lot more of them out there than what you you'd never see it because you don't see them rolling around like a rooftop tent. You go, oh, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. rooftop tents. Um, yeah, you pack them away. For a, yeah. a personal individual unit. These things are fantastic. This is hmm. camping that's simple at its yeah. best. Right. Yep. Well, if you've been paying attention to the overlanding scene over the last few years, uh, simplicity is bad. And the more shit you have, the better. So, you know, that's the part I like about overlanding. You can make it as simple or complex as you choose to do, whether yeah. it be budgetary constraints or technological or just I want to I don't want to make it too hard. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. And to, it's it's really a choose your own adventure thing like i refuse to put anything on my roof that's not an awning i won't do a roof rack i won't do uh, you know rooftop tent unless it's like dire dire need you know um but there's people who there's a guy in my town who drives around with like his roto packs and a rooftop tent on in a daily driver and like i don't oh, yeah, you've got to... know what he does yeah, it's boards, but a rooftop yeah. tent and, and a roto packs at least one to be an overlander yep. Mm-hmm. Really? And, no, and really. sure. But, Maybe it's an every weekend kind of thing, but like, is it? Is, <laughs> you know? Do you remember when they used to bolt surfboards to the roof? Is that kind of yeah. deal? Yeah. 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 Or you keep your ski rack on all year just so people know you ski. Uh, yeah. Camille. Yeah, yep. Camille. We're looking at you. <laughs> yep. Yep. Sorry, our friend has got a Land Cruiser Prado that he just got his uh, snowboard rack up on top of. In all he fairness, t- he does probably, actually go to the resorts quite a bit. It. Like he'll yeah, he'll actually use it. <laughs> it was just more fun to give a stats. Uh, yeah. Find out if he was listening <laughs> to this episode. <laughs> that too. That too. Yeah, it's funny how Ross said that where he's like, oh, I don't want anything up there. And that's all I'm considering right now is on the Suburban. I got to get a rack and then I want the 10. And then the yeah, rack. I just, you don't end up in tight tree situations the way I do. Arkansas is not that far away. Yeah, but. That's what, the, I, the trails I'm in the Northeast hard are hard shells now. Like the, I, the, <laughs> shit here is the trails are tight and the Lexus is not small. Um Homie, it's smaller than the Suburban. It is smaller than the Suburban, but I fucking hate weight up high. I just, I can't stand that, you know, unless After I'm... the first two days, you won't even know what's up there, Ross. I know, I know, unless it's purposeful. Corner, Didn't you just upgrade corner, suspension? It will lay over, you will shit yourself. Um, Then two days after <laughs> that, you'll get used to it, and it'll be all good. Yeah. You won't even know it's any different. Yep. After you're leaning on the side the first couple of times, it's all fine. <laughs> yeah, I, look, I, I did it, you know, way back when we first started this and I got uh, the first 23-0 sample flown across and I threw it on my Jeep and we went out playing. You know, I was a, I was a, I was a Jeep of years back and uh, the thing laid over and I tell you, I, 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 I the wife, out. Mm-hmm. Get out. We're, we're going <laughs> yeah. over. We're going over for sure. Yeah. We were nowhere. We were nowhere. Looking back at the video, we were not even close to going over. It always that, feels worse inside than it is. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I was dead. Oh, no doubt. I was dead. And it, and it never looks as bad on picture or video as it is. No, so no, we had a long way to go. And, and <laughs> after that, we went a gazillion yeah. places and laid it down much further than that. Yeah. Um, and I got more comfortable with it. But the first couple of times, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a pucker factor involved with that. It was oh certainly God, amplified yeah. just because of my experience. Yeah. What? Yeah. All right. I found a square body. Sorry. I was, I was trying to get through the Instagram feed to find the Jeep, but I found a square Ooh, body and stopped. Wow. That's God a big, damn, that's a big, those trucks. That's an, so that's an 87 good. on the top of that. See, I can fit one on top of the Suburban. Easy, yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. truck might be an 87. It could be. It's a, that, No, that? on that truck is an 87. I can, it's it's two doors, two ladders. Well, I, eight, I think you talk about the generation of the Suburban, the, the, too. That's oh, okay. That, what year yeah. model? Okay, so uh, you know what? I've been here for, for, for eight and a half years, and there's still trucks I go... <laughs> but i don't know what it is yeah so i i worked at a company for a while that did aftermarket parts for uh classic american pickups and suvs so i've gotten huh? really good at at giving you a gap of years i can tell you that's a 78 to a 91 yep mm-hmm. <laughs> yep some of them i can get to the specific year um but you but can't see one. the nose or rear on this so side, no side markers would help me yeah, all the grill. Yeah. Oh, I've got a thing for Jeeps. We've got in our uh, uh, in our store. We have a '63 Jeep Wagoneer. 
Mm. Be used for a demo. It has a V8 in it, all sorts of goodies, but um, um, like an MC V8 or uh, like no, it a actually has Chevy a V8. V8 of some description. We didn't put it in. It, we bought it like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we had all these aspirations it's... to put a JK chassis under it, and um, and no, then I... and then I go, hang on, I, I can't do another project. <laughs> it had yeah. four wheels. Yeah. yeah. It, it has four. So this one starts and runs. It may be noisy and smelly, but it does start and run. Um. But it's the front grill. Do you remember the Simpsons episode, the Canyonero? Canyonero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. It was. Uh, it was Marge Simpson and this Canyonero that she drove everywhere. This monster truck, and it was. It was this Jeep. Like the grill is that Jeep. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I needed to have one for that reason. Completely impractical. Um, needs a bucket load of work to make it anywhere close to being drivable. But you know what? I just needed it. There it's all Jeep. No- yeah. large images of the canyon arrow <laughs> if it if it didn't need work it wouldn't be an old jeep yeah and, and again that's where my wife uh um so here's here's some terminology that that there we go there's the canyon arrow mm-hmm. that's it um and, and really that's your suburban you know it's, it, it was huge this yeah. thing the zip code yep. you know it's huge yep yeah oh. so my wife uh i've been recently educated on the difference between a project and a toy Ooh. Hmm. And there's a distinct difference. I'm allowed to have toys, but I can only have one project. So toys <laughs> run. Projects don't run. Project, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's, if, if it's a toy and you can start it, we're good. Yep. If it's yep. a project, yeah, not so good. See, that, she's, that, that tracks. That yeah, tracks. she's got standards. Yeah. 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 And, and it has to have four wheels. If it's going to park in the yard, it has to have four wheels. <laughs> yeah. It's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I can't, that I, so I can't argue that. Can't argue that. Well, so, sweet. We have yeah. gotten through our time. Is there anything else you wanted to plug or talk about? Oh, you know what? I, I think we've covered a whole bunch of stuff. And um, as I said, our market continues to grow and change. And, and I said it before and I'll say it again. If you're going to buy a rooftop tent or an awning, um, cheap is cheap. All right. So have a look at the details um, because because it's the, it's the small details that make the difference. Um, learn what you're looking at. Go and touch and feel it. Go to a store. Touch and feel it. You're in Kansas. Um, I know there's a store in Kansas. Uh, I know they stock our product. Um, um, I, I'm not sure where, where where you are, Ross, and what's around you, but I'm sure there's a store somewhere that you can actually go and touch and feel and compare. We've got one in Salt yep. Lake City that has um um a variety of brands so you can go from model to model and if huh. you can't do that go to a trade show actually yes. go and look yeah. stuff and touch and go to an expo yep um uh the internet's a wonderful thing but it's also not a wonderful thing because if you find someone's opinion and i love um facebook tell me about your best experience what's the best rooftop tent go so most of those people have only so the rooftop tents are a couple of grand a piece yeah most people have only ever had one so the one they've had is the best mm-hmm. one Oh yeah, but it's the same thing with tires and suspension. Uh, what should I get? Yeah. Oh yeah, get get this. Yeah, go on. So I, I and I laugh about you know we've spoken about soft shells and hard shells, um, and people say and I, and I use the word people Facebook, um, hard shells the way to go. You need to have a hard shell. Um, Chris, you've got how many kids? Four. Right, you're not going to fit in a hard shell. No, Straight up. it's just not going to work. <laughs> so is it your best tent? No. Because no one understands what your situation is. So yeah. before you go and buy anything, mm-hmm. figure out what's right for you and do your homework. Um, don't rely. I won't go out and spend, you know, a, a two grand at some random dude from somewhere that I've never heard of to buy a product. Because you know what? That dude on the internet said it was good. So when it all goes pear-shaped, you go, I'm going to ring up that dude and tell him, you told me to buy this thing. <laughs> right, right. And it's shit. You know, it doesn't happen, does it? Yeah. So no. do your homework. Yeah. You guys, um, believe it or not, I was looking at the list of uh, of authorized dealers, and there is one an hour from me nice. that I didn't even know existed, honestly. So I will, uh, I will have to make a trip out there. My so guys are much those, closer. All those guys uh, that's on our website as 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 dealers all have a brick and mortar store. Mm-hmm. So you have yeah. to have a brick and mortar store to have a twenty two zero tent um, uh, to sell our stuff because we want people um to come and touch and feel and again i encourage those guys to have more than one brand so they can do a comparison what's mm-hmm. different between that one and that one why is that one 500 bucks and that one 2000 bucks that one's 4000 bucks and then make a good choice based off that information yep yep, yep. 
I love it so I much. Yep. Well, sweet. Uh, you can rate and review the show on wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. We're there. You can follow 230. It's at 230 USA, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, it was about everywhere I could track you guys down. Um, <laughs> good for you to not be on Twitter. Um, you can follow Universe, <laughs> the Universe on on Twitter, the Real Universe on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And we've done it. We did another show. Yeah. Thank you so much, Justin. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Justin. Uh, Chris. Thanks, Ross. It was uh, good chatting to you, boys. Likewise.